Okay, hi everybody, we're back again, and today we're going to learn RSA encryption. Okay, so this is asymmetric encryption, and that means that we're going to have public private key pairs. Okay, um, just a quick overview the way this works, right? is if Alice and Bob want to send in encrypted information in between them, each of them has to generate step number one, okay? Create your key pair, okay? Then step number two, send uh, your public key to the other person, okay? Step number three is encrypt document or whatever it is, file, image, zip file, doesn't matter. You can even, you could even encrypt like, um, well, well, I gotta say, in this case, we are limited, by the way, right? Because this is RSA, and we are limited to approximately, uh, we'll say, limited to approximately 245 bytes. So that's not a lot. I mean, it's enough for a small message, but um, how about we'll just say, instead of saying document here, we'll just say, uh, in, in, encrypt string, okay? In the next lesson, you'll see how this all comes together. Uh, but we'll say using um, other person's, using, we'll just say others, using others public key. Not rublic, but that's a P. Okay? And then, and then send it, okay? Four is send. And then obviously, five would be, uh, now this is the other person, okay? So this is the other person. Uh, now they would decrypt using their private key. Okay, so there's the algorithm that we've kind of created. So, step number one, let's make the key pair. Okay, so let's go to the code. So I've got two um, terminals here, and let's take a look at what's inside of them. Okay, so on the left-hand side here, in this terminal, we have three files, RSA decrypt, encrypt, and keygen, and we have a directory called remote. And in that directory called remote are the same three files. Now guess what? That remote directory is over here on the right hand side. So essentially this is the remote directory on the right and on the left is the parent directory. They have the same things in each one. Okay? Let us now, um, first of all, let's take a look at the RSA keygen. Actually, this is good that this happened. So there's an error here we're going to have to fix on both sides. And this is the old API. Uh, we're going to have to change that to dot .crypto. And same there. And so we'll have to do that over here as well. Uh, RSA. Oops. Okay, so we'll come over here. And we'll delete the end of that. We'll go down and do the same thing. There we go. That's better. Okay, because that's the that's the PyCryptodome uh, new API. Let's write that, and let's write that. All right. So notice we're doing RSA uh, generate and 2048. Okay, so that's 256. Uh, bytes and then the, so that's standard 
that's standard for RSA. Um, then what we're going to do is we're going to create our private key by going key.export key. And then we're going to create our public key by going key.public key dot export key. Okay? So notice when you just go export key on, on the key uh, object, you get the private one. But if you do export key specifically on the public key, then you'll get the public one. Then we're going to just simply write those two files to the, uh, to the disk or save them. However, uh, being as this is Alice and Bob, let's make this left terminal Alice and let's call this, uh, let's, let's change this. Let's go Alice pub dot pen. Okay. And let's, let's do Alice dot prive for private pen. Okay. There we go. So we can now write that. And we'll come over here and fix this one too. We'll change this one to Bob public. And we'll change this one to Bob private. There we go. Okay. And oops. And now they're both saved. So we can now. Uh, escape out of this, we get out of Vim, and we'll just, you know, cat them out just to show, show them on the screen to you uh, once again before we run them. And so now we're going to go Python 3, and we'll go RSA. Now before I do this, once again, I just want you to see what's inside the directory. That's it. And so we'll go Python 3 RSA keygen and hit it. Notice it took a, like, well, one or almost two seconds, one second or so. That, I mean, that's computing time. So it had to actually, uh, you know, get some randomness from the system in order to generate those keys. Let's take a look at what we have now. Okay, we've got Alice private key and Alice public key. Okay, uh, let's take a look also at the uh, permissions. So that's good. Um, you want to be careful. So here are the two files. You want to be careful with the permissions of your private key. Okay, so notice here's my uh, user and my group. Uh, you definitely don't want this to be readable by others, okay? Um, and if there are other people in this group, then I would definitely remove these permissions from here, okay? So you you, you want to make sure that your uh, private key is is held securely. Your public key, you can give that to everybody, like, and we're going to do that in a second here. Let's do the same thing here uh, for Bob. So we'll go Python 3 and RSA keygen, and we'll run it. And it took like a second or so. And we'll go LL again. And there it is. Now we've got Bob's private and public keys. OK? OK, so now what? Well, let's go take a look at the next thing in the step. We've created our key pairs, so that's done. Okay, now we have to send our public keys to the other person. Okay, let's do it. Well, in this case, I mean, you, you, there's a variety of ways to do this in the real world, but in this case, we're simply working in two separate directories. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to copy Alice's public key to the remote directory. Boom. And now, notice if I take a look what's in here, there it is. It wasn't there before, but now Alice's public key is here. That's good. And let's, di let's get Bob to do the same thing. So Bob's going to send his public key. We'll go copy uh, Bob 
public key and we'll send it up one directory and now if we come over here we'll go take a look what's in here and notice now Bob's public key is here okay so that's that's step two done let's take a look at what the next step is encrypt string using others public key all right so let's go now and take a look at the encryption program so let's go RSA encrypt and let's do the same thing over here with Bob Vim RSA encrypt okay so let's take a look at them on Alice's side whoops the left hand side is Alice yep okay so we're importing uh, RSA and PKCS1 OAE P so here in the PyCryptodome docs is this cipher's description it's an asymmetric cipher based on RSA and the OAE P padding and so that's what we're going to use in our code okay so first thing we do is we're going to open up the public key now remember this left side is Alice so let's just maybe put a note here that this is Alice okay and on this side just to make a note here as well that this is in fact Bob okay so what's Alice gonna do well she's going to have to encrypt a secret text now we didn't really show you what that secret text was so why don't we do that first uh, what's secret text well we don't have any secret text over here okay so we're gonna have to make one that's fine um, we'll call it let's call it a message to Bob message to Bob dot txt okay um, is that too many camel case how about let's just go message to Bob there we go and we'll say something like hi Bob how are you so that's that's the that is that's it I know it's short and it's not very secret but it'll do for our purposes of demonstration um, and now we'll save that and now let's go back into the uh, encryption and we'll say uh, here okay so we gotta come down a little bit first we're gonna make the key and we're going to make so the, oh by the way yeah 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 we gotta fix this here uh, this is not public pen this is going to have to be Bob's public key okay so we're sending something to Bob so we're gonna have to use Bob's public key and I think we called it Bob uh, Bob pub dot pen okay and so that's going to be the public key we're gonna read that and then we're going to take that public key and create the RSA key by importing it and then we're going to create the cipher the RSA cipher using that newly created key it's very straightforward very short code okay it's not complicated at least um, you know utilizing the library uh, is not complicated and so here we're not going to encrypt secret in fact we're going to encrypt message to Bob okay and then here we're going to uh, read that file and we're going to encode it okay so now s becomes the string that we're going to send so we've already created the cipher on line 10 up here so now we'll encrypt it 
using the new cipher. And now we'll have this encrypted uh, data. And so now we'll say um, here, we'll call it message to Bob. Okay, there we go. And now we're going to write that as a binary and we'll go f.write uh, whatever we encrypted here. Okay? So now let's let's save this. There we go. And let's let's run it. Okay? Okay, so here is the, the code again that we just finished editing. Let's run it now. Now before I run it, just to show you what's in the directory here. Um, those are the files. Okay, we've got Alice's private and public keys here. We got Bob's public key. And we've got the, the original message to Bob. But we don't have the encrypted message to Bob yet. Okay, so let's run it and create that file. So Python 3, RSA, <coughs> encrypt, run it. And now, notice, now I have another file called message to Bob encrypted. Let's cat these two files just to see what was in them. Now, remember, the text one was that one. And now let's take a look at the encrypted one. And it's totally obfuscated. Okay. Um, by the way, also, uh, let's take a look at the sizes. This one was 20 bytes on disk, the original message. This one is 256 uh, bytes on disk. Now, do you remember, the reason why this happens, okay, is because we're using uh, 2048-bit RSA encryption. And that's the reason why this is 256 uh, bytes. Now, great. Now what we're going to do is, well, what's the next step? Let's go and take a look. OK. Uh, send your, now, now the next thing is send. OK. We have, to, we have to send this message to the other person. Now, listen, the thing is, we kind of skipped one step here. and. Uh, I think we should do that too. Let's get Bob to write a message as well. Okay, so uh, Bob doesn't have a message to send to Alice. So uh, let's create one for him. So we'll call it mess to Alice. And he'll say, hi, he'll say something like, hi, Alice, I am fine. There we go. And now we'll save that. And so um, now we'll go back. OK, so now we're back at Bob's uh, encrypt file. And notice what I've changed here. I've changed that we're going to be reading Alice's public key that we copied over to Bob. And then, like before, we, make the, we get the key, we import the key from the file, create the RSA cipher. Now we're going to open the message to Alice's text saying that Bob says he's fine. And we're going to read that, encode it. And now we've got that object, S. We're going to encrypt it just like we did before. And now we're going to write that to message to Alice, right? This is from Bob. And that's going to be in, uh, encrypted. So now let's run that. Python 3. RSA, and now, oh, okay, before we do this, um, let's just take a look at what files we've got here again. Okay, now we'll run it. And now, notice um, we've got the encrypted file right there. Okay, and once again, uh, if we go message to Alice, uh, it's it's encrypted. Okay, 
Now, let's let's do the sending now of these messages. Okay, so let's send. Let's get Bob to send the message to Alice encrypted. There we go. Sent. And so that that dot dot by the way sends it to the directory above if you don't know Linux. And uh, here, let's take a look. Okay, what we got. And now let's. So, so now we've got um, we've got to send the message to Bob. Copy message to Bob. Encrypted, and we'll send that to the remote directory over here. Okay. And so let's run that. Done. OK, so now where are we in our algorithm? OK, so after sending here, all we have left now is de to decrypt using, each person now has to decrypt using their own private key. OK? So let's take a look at the decrypt uh, code. RSA decrypt. And let's do the same thing over here. Well, actually, let's do this one at a time here because uh, it's nice to be able to see the files that we're going to be working with. So, okay, this is all right. Now, here, remember who this is. Okay, so this is, this is the decrypting file. This is Alice, so let's put that up here. And she is going to use her own private key. Okay, so I believe that was called Alice Private PEM. And she is now going to import that key using RSA. And then she's going to create the new cipher using that key. And now she's going to open the message that Bob sent her. So now, which message did Bob send her? This was called message to Alice. Okay, that's the message to Alice. And of course, that's called dot .enc, and we're going to open that for reading binary. There we go, and we'll, we'll decrypt that, not encrypt it. And then, um, let's call this Let's see. Let's call this uh, message to Alice and um, dot text. Now, this is what the file was called on the other side. So perhaps we should just call this slightly different. Um, let's maybe I don't know. Let's uh, how should we make this different? So I don't want it to be exactly the same file name because then it might just seem like we just copied the file, which is not what we're doing. OK, I think I know what uh, we'll do here. Um, we will go, we'll call it um, message to Alice uh, from Bob. I know that's a super long. Uh, or how about we'll just go like from Bob and we'll get rid of this secret stuff here and there that's it okay and and we're gonna get the, the data and of course it's in binary format so we'll decode it to a string and then uh, we'll write it okay message to Alice from Bob there we go should we put from okay good enough now, let's run this. And those are the files we have. And so let's go Python 3 RSA decrypt. And we'll run it. And now, the files that we have now, well, we have that new file now. Now let's see what it says. Cat message to Alice from Bob. Hi, Alice, I am fine. That's what he sent. And now let's go over here and do the same thing. OK, on this side, uh, we did the same thing. Obviously, this is Bob's code now. And his, this is his decrypt 
file. And so first thing we're going to get his private, Bob has to get his own private key. Get that and then again the key in the cipher like before. Now he opens the message to him from Alice. Okay. And it's encrypted. He has to now decrypt it. Line 15. And then he's going to write it to like once again we same thing, but now this is the message to Bob from Alice. So let's save this and now we'll run it. And when we run it, notice now we have this new file here and let's see what it says. Message to Bob from Alice. Hi Bob, how are you? And so that's it. We got it to work. Now, it works for both people. I just want to reiterate here. Uh, okay, this is really important to, to see here. We can only do this with a few hundred bytes, around 245 bytes or so, I think, somewhere around there. Uh, so this is not going to work with big files. Uh, this is pretty small. So in the next lesson, you'll actually, what we're going to do is we're going to combine RSA and AES to actually have full-on encryption in the way that it's used in the world, okay? Where because RSA can only encode short stuff, we're going to use RSA to actually encode the AES key. AES is very fast and it is, can encrypt an unlimited amount of data. So therefore, we're going to use the, the benefits or the, the, the advantages of both encryption strategies, symmetric and asymmetric, next time. However, before we end this video, there's something we, we need to discuss. Uh, one thing actually, before I discuss this next thing, uh, I would say this though is that in terms of the uh, the code right I purposefully decided to hard code stuff in here because I wanted you guys to see exactly uh, how I was doing stuff because I wanted you to kind of get the understand the concept of how public private key pair exchange and encryption decryption works so we so I hard coded stuff now uh, this is not really that nice to this is very cumbersome to to have to modify the source code every time you want to run these programs especially if it's with different people um, you know you wouldn't do it this way this is just for educational purposes so how would I do this if I if I wanted this to to be usable, well, obvious answer is I would use command line arguments. So I would import sys, and then um, instead of actually providing, you know, these arguments here, where I'm, I'm, well, perhaps the private key uh, that wouldn't have to change because you'd always your, use your own private key to decrypt. But let's say the the message that you're going to decrypt that could be a command line argument, and um, the the file that the the new file that's going to be decrypted that could be a command line argument okay or at least uh, with a different uh, ending enc versus txt okay and similarly for the other programs I think I would also change to command line arguments using import sys and sysargv so um, yeah you can check out my uh, first course CS1 for how to do that if you're not sure. However, we still have one more thing to discuss. Okay, so this is the fun part. Okay, this is the cloak and dagger stuff now. What we're going to discuss is a man in the middle attack, how it works, and how to prevent this. Okay, so RSA and uh, asymmetric encryption, you know, or key exchange doesn't have anything that's going to prevent a man in the middle attack. 
So we need to be aware of this. And first of all, in order to be aware of it, we, we have to understand how it works. So uh, over here we had Alice, and over here we have Bob. Okay, And in the middle, we're going to have Eve, who is an, who listens to everything because she's the evil eavesdropper. Don't you love that? So now, let's go through the whole thing again, right? So Alice creates her uh, public and private keys. Bob creates his public and private keys. And now the first step in what they do is they exchange public keys, right? Okay, now here comes the attack. As soon as Alice sends her public key to Bob, Eve intercepts it. She blocks it. Eve creates her own public and private key. Okay. She then takes her public key and sends it to Bob as if it belongs to Alice. As far as Bob knows now, the public key that he receives okay, from Alice, he thinks that this new public key, well, maybe we just kind of, let's just do one ended side because I don't want to confuse it too much. So let's just delete his public and private keys. Okay, so basically he receives a public key. Okay, he thinks this belongs to Alice, but it doesn't. It's actually Eve's. Now, um, he then takes his message and he encrypts it with this public key and sends it back. Okay, so he sends this encrypted message back to Alice. But en route, as it's going to Alice, okay, Eve stops it. Now remember, when Alice sent Bob her public key, Eve didn't just delete it. She saved Alice's public key. Okay? She saved that. She didn't just delete it. She substituted, Eve substituted her own public key and sent that to Bob. Now, the message comes back. Eve, Eve intercepts it, stops it. What does she do with this message? Well, guess what? Whose public key was it encrypted with? That's right. It was encrypted with Eve's public key. So she, she is now able to decrypt the message. She can now read the message or, and or modify. Ooh, this is getting really, really interesting, really juicy. She can even modify perhaps the message. But definitely she's reading it, right? But then, what does she do? She then encrypts it with her own private key. Or, sorry, that was wrong. Okay, so now Eve encrypts the message with the saved public key from Alice. Remember, she saved that up here. Now, once she encrypts that with Alice's right public key, now she sends that message back to Alice as if it's coming from Bob. Whoa. As far as Alice is concerned, she doesn't know that all this intermediary stuff happened where it was decrypted, read, modified perhaps, and then re-encrypted with her own public key and sent back to her. As far as she's aware, this message is from Bob. See, so this is a man in the middle attack. Now remember, I'm not going to go through the whole explanation again, but you can do this whole thing now in reverse, the other way. So imagine if Bob sends his public key Eve intercepts it again, saves it, 
substitutes her own public key and vice versa. So essentially, Eve is the man in the middle attack. So the man in the middle attacker. Now, how do you stop this? Is there a way to prevent this? And the answer is, yes, there is a way and involves hashing. So the way to prevent this is you have to have some out of band method where Alice and Bob can communicate. And I mean, personally, I mean, there are many ways, but uh, the best probable way that I could think of is a telephone conversation. And what should, what should Bob and Alice do when they get on the phone? Well, let me show you. Okay, so let, we're back here at uh, Alice and Bob's directories here. It's Alice on the left and Bob on the right again. And so now they get on the phone. Notice, what did Bob, sorry, what did Alice receive from Bob? He received Bob's public key. So now Alice will actually take the hash of this, and there are many different hashes. The old, older one would be MD5SUM. Uh, that's been busted. That is broken. Uh, it's apparently not supposed to trust it anymore. There is SHA-1 uh, SHA and, and also SHA-256. Um, I have heard that SHA-1 ha has been somehow compromised. I'm not really sure. This is really vague. Uh, SHA-256 is available, but honestly, I'm just going to do this demonstration with SHA-1 some. Um, I think it's pretty secure. So we'll go SHA-1 sum and now remember they're on the phone, right? So they're going to do the same thing to each other's public keys. So now we'll go SHA-1 sum and, and Bob will do it to Alice's public key, okay? So um, no, actually, no, wait, wait, wait. Obviously they have to do it on the, the same key. So first, they're going to do this twice for two different keys, but each person has the other person's public key. So first, Alice will say to Bob, Bob, let's check your public key. And Bob says, OK. So now Bob has to get his public key. So we'll go Bob public key. And Bob will say, the, sh the, sh the hash of my public key is. And he'll start reading out this string. And you can read this string on the phone. It's not, it's not too long. And then Alice will take the SHA of the uh, sum or the hash of the same file on her side. And guess what? They, they have to match. And so when they're on the phone and they read it out and voila, they say, OK, our Bob's public key is verified. Okay. Even now, the important thing to understand about a hash is, even if one like bit in this file was different, those those uh, SHA sums are not going to match. Let's do the same thing. So now, okay. So now says Alice says, okay. Let's do let's do my let's check mine. She says my. So Alice would say my sh my public key hash is, there it is, and then Bob, once he receives her public key, would say, okay, let me verify that. And then he would read the number, and of course, in this case, in this case, they do match. So now they know that there's, there hasn't been any public key tampering. If Eve substituted her own public key for either of those, uh, as a man in the middle attack, those shot those those hashes would not match and then they would go oh my god someone is attacking us okay and they and then they would basically start over again uh, and but at this point they would know that someone is trying to uh to trick them okay obviously there is another possibility that is simpler and that simply is that somehow the file got corrupted in transit it is, a, it is a possibility, although slight. It could happen. So it doesn't, necess doesn't necessarily mean that someone is attacking them in the middle, but it could. Okay, so 
Um, I thought maybe the uh, last thing we would do here is take a look at how hashing uh, is able to detect a, a change. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hex edit uh, Bob's public key here, which we just took the SHA-1 uh, sum of. And we'll come down here, let's say, to any, it doesn't matter where, but I'll change that 6, say, so that byte 68, I'm going to change it to, let's say, a 5. Okay, that's it. I'm going to save it and exit. And now, if I take the SHA-1 sum of Bob again, notice what it's supposed to be here. Okay, but now if I take it, Notice it's not anything near the same, and I only changed like half a byte. So th that's the power of hashing, is that even if you change one bit, you're not going to get the same hash. And so if there's any discrepancy between those files, it'll be immediately obvious between the two people when they're on the phone checking the, their uh, hashes of their public keys. Well, hope you enjoyed this lesson. Next time, we're going to do RSA and AES for full-blown uh, encryption. Thanks for watching.